Lord God, you know, as I prepared this message, I was asking God for some insight and some instructions to help His people to take us to a place where we have not been or where we don't know how to get to. Everybody has a debit card that has a bank account, right? In order to use that get debit card, you have to have what's called an access code, right? You have to have access to that. Some of us have access to God but never used our code to get there. We never encountered the access code, which is his holy word, to get to it. We never picked it up. We never, we never had an understanding of what it is to use the access code to free us, to move us into a place where we need to be. And then I thought about in our everyday lives how we rush here and rush there, have time for this and have time for that. Especially the parents. How many times you get into your car and the way, the way that technology is today, it has this little sound to say ding, ding, ding when you're low on gas. When your fuel is almost ran out and it just makes this sound ding, to let you know that you need to refill your gas. But some of us have gotten so good with understanding how our car operates that we know that we have, today is Sunday, we got until Tuesday, if we go 16 miles an hour, I have enough gas to get me through that those next few days. I know how much it's, it's going to take. If I don't go over this speed, I got enough gas to last me this amount of days. But we get to that point and we do that because we understand there's no consequences that's going to happen if we run out of gas. Nothing is going to take place if I run out of gas. So we continue to do this Understanding that there is no consequences. But today we're going to learn that, that you had in, in Matthew, go to Matthew chapter 25, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 12. I might hit 13. We have 10 virgins in, the, in, in, this, in this scripture. Five had the oil that they needed. Five did not have oil because they did not prepare themselves to do what they were supposed to do. So in this, I'm going to say we have five wise versions and five unwise. The unwise didn't do what they were supposed to. And then you find out as we read this scripture that the five that did not have, they wanted to, to go to the five that had and get some from them. Matthew chapter 25. They wanted to use the, the ones that, that already had their oil to, to, to run their lamp. They wanted to use theirs. And we're going to see some things that, that, and understand some things that we're going to have to really take a look at in our everyday life. So if you have Matthew chapter 25, please stand to your feet as we read together. And I'm going to read first, start verse 12, all, I mean verse 1 down to verse 13. It's the parable of wise and foolish virgins. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, 
Everybody say, at midnight. <laughs> a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their, light, their lamps. Verse number eight. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, no, lest there should be no, not enough for us. And you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Before I go any further, I, I just had a problem with that after I first read it. Because I'm looking at Christians. And, and, this, and that these, ten, these five said that, that no, you can't have none of my oil. But how many of us Christians, when people need help, we say, no, we can't help you. Or watch this, I'll pray for you. I had an issue with this at first. But I'm going to give you a better understanding why the issue went away after I continued to study this out. In verse 10 says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him. To the wedding. And the door was shut. And I was like Lord. Here's another issue I had. You shut the door on people Father God. You didn't let them in. But God you let everybody in. Why did you shut the door on them? And as we go further in this message. We're going to see why he shut the door on them. Matthew 25 and verse number 11 now. After the other virgins came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly I say to you, I do not know you. I do not know you. Watch therefore you. No, neither the day nor the hour in which this time the Son of Man will return or is coming. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. In this parable, it speaks against the mentality of putting things off. It talks about how people... Really put things off. When God places something before you when, you, when you have a mandate to do something, as simple as show up, watch this, and, and no, ton, no pun intended on YouTube that came in a little later, but on time. We put off showing up on time. We put off taking care of what God has told us to take care of when he told us to take care of it. We don't accomplish it when he asked us to do it. I used earlier an example when, when we know our vehicles and we rush and we use this as an excuse. We rush throughout our day and we don't have time to do something. We don't have time to put gas in our car. We don't have time to stop and put gas. You say, I know my car. I just used this example. I said, you, you, your, your warning bell rings in your car. I said, ding, time to fill up your car. It's almost empty. And in my car, it shows that how many miles I have left before it runs out. So watch this. Now I calculate in my head. I have 50 miles until I need to, to fill up again. It takes me. 15 miles to go to work, 15 miles to come back home. If I stay under a certain speed, I will burn less gas. So I don't got to go stop right now. I don't have to go right in and there. So I can go a few more days if I follow the directions of what's in my mind. But watch how God does us. When we think everything's going all right. God throws a hiccup in there or a speed bump just to show you that you need to depend on him and not your mind and not your own self. So you get in a traffic jam and everything is just went out 
of your plan because now you're stuck in traffic and you're spending or using more gas than you thought. If I would endeavor to get this, this message a title, I thought about my lovely mother. And we went to the grocery store on the other day. And on, on, on your card, it has an expiration date on it. And if you try to use that card after your expiration, it says access denied. And that's the subject title of this message. Access denied. So I don't care how many times you put that card in there. It's going to come back with the same reading. Access denied. Wouldn't it be a shame for men and women of God to do everything that they thought was right from the day that they got saved until the day of Christ coming and he get, you get there and he says, I knew you not. Because it's now telling you that your access is denied because you did not do what God has purposed you to do. You have some formality of a relationship with him. But then he said, who are you? And you're going to say, did not prophesy in your name, Lord. Did not lay hands on the sick. But God said, you didn't do that for me. You were doing that for yourself and you were doing it for your daddy. Remember we talked about earlier when the wheat and the tear grow together and see this is what happens. You have people that's coming before you playing that they're, they're Christians and they show in some form of Christianity but you don't know them because you don't know who labors amongst you. You never got a relationship with them. You never drunk the cup with them. So when the time comes God said, access denied, because I don't know you, and I don't know your deeds, because the deeds that you have is not the deeds that I do. So now your access is denied. And watch this, Jesus is talking to the disciples here, and the disciples asked Jesus a question. And the question is, they said, what is the sign that you're going to give us, Lord? When the Son of Man is coming back, or when the time of the world is going to end, Jesus then turns and said, he uses this, this symbolism of a wedding to answer their question. We have to understand that there are different elements in this parable, parable that Jesus used. It's different elements of this parable. It's not as cut as dry as you think it is. We understand that, that there is a groom, right? That's one element. The second element, we have ten virgins. That's an element. And then we have to understand that we have lamps and we have oil. So to understand this parable, we got to understand the elements that goes with it. Lamps, a groom, oil, and virgins. So you got to understand what each and every one of these means to understand what the parable is talking about. You got to get into your word or watch. You read your word and as you read your word, the more relationship, the more understanding. The more he talks to your heart, the more he frees your heart up. It was a mandate for this house and we, it was put out last week. Start with December the 1st to read a chapter a day from the book of Matthew. God told us that, listen, some of the things that he does, he just want to see who's faithful. He want to see who's going to gain the access that he has for him. Today is now the what, third? How many read? Each day, you got 28 chapters. You got 31 days in this month. So watch. You got two days to make up for what you missed. 
God is trying to see who is faithful to do what the mandate that he sent. Because he wants to say that your access is accepted. He don't want to say it's denied. But you push his hand. Because everything's a free will. You decide to do what you want to do. You decide. The groom, write this. The groom represents Jesus in this parable. Say it with me. The groom represents Jesus. The ten virgins represent the church. And the state it is in now. The lamp represents your heart. And everyone has a heart. You don't got to repeat that. You're not, you're not the wizard. I mean, you're not the scarecrow. You're not looking. For, didn't he look for a heart? Or was that the tin man? You are, you're not the tin man. You got a heart. A heart is in there. But some of our hearts are hard. Some of our hearts are froze. But it's still there. And you continue to read the word of God. It softens the heart. When you get rid of yourself, move yourself out of the equation. God can tend to your heart then. But as, as, if you stay into yourself, that heart stays hard. And every little thing bothers you. Because it goes straight to your heart. You are not the tin man. And the oil represents the Holy Spirit. And let me, let me help you something right here. The oil is what fuses the lamps. What did I just tell you the, the oil was? What is the lamp? So the Holy Spirit fuse your what? The Holy Spirit should fuel your heart. And if the Holy Spirit fuse your heart, you're good to go. You're running, and you're not going to run out. Well, that, that song, I'm running, I ain't tired yet. You ain't going to be tired with the oil of the Holy Spirit. In most cases, to the focus is on the bride. When we look at it's on the bride. Everybody is reading this, is focusing on the bride. Can I just mess your theological plan up? Can I, can I suspend your mindset just a little bit and change your mindset here? I want you to think about every element that he's using. Everything that I just told you that he's using. Not just the bride. What was the groom? Jesus. What was the ten virgins? The church. And the state that it is in now. The oil? The lamp? So you need to focus on every element of what this scripture is telling you. Don't just focus on the bride. Because watch, if you leave out a certain element, we're limping into what God has prepared us for. That's why it says many parts, one body. If I leave out you, we're, we're not full. If I leave you out, we're not complete. If I leave you not, we're not done right. We got to have everybody operating in the element that God has placed you in to be a complete kingdom church. I don't want, we're not a church. We're a kingdom church because a kingdom church is not going to do people wrong. A kingdom biz, uh, uh, facility is going to have every element of what God says in order. Every element. And we see that we're still striving to get there. We're still striving to try to be complete. Because people don't want to stand up in their responsibilities. 
We got a text yesterday. My wife did. And, and this thing has been, been on my mind. And, and the individual asked, was it regular service today at 1030? And we said, yes. And they said, okay, I plan on being there, but I might not be able to make this Sunday, but I will be there again. And this individual lives in another state. Three hours away. And they continue to focus on being here. Don't tell me. Don't tell me that we're too far out in the woods. If she thinks about three hours away and she wants to be here, I'd rather you tell me, Pastor, I don't like your teaching or your preaching. But don't tell me we're too far. Because you go where you want to go when you want to go. Access is denied because you're using it as an excuse that I can't go way out there to the top of the mountain because they're so far away. No. When you want to go somewhere and drop it like it's hot, you go. When you want to shake your money maker, you go. When you want to go to a baseball game or a basketball game in another city or another state, you go. Why do we put God on a short uh, leash or, 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 or distance to get to his house? Elder Watley, y'all remember her? Elder Watley lived almost an hour away, well, 45 to 50 minutes away, and she made it every Sunday before she passed away. She passed over 100 churches to get here. Because she said what she needed was here. Can I tell y'all something? I'm not, I'm not picking at y'all. I'm just giving the word that God says. See, he just shined his light when I said that. I've said this before. I never came to your house and told you to come here. You told me who sent you here. I can almost end the message right there. You said it. I didn't tell you God told you to come here. You told me God. And you know what God told me? He said, challenge you then. My job is to challenge you when you get here. We as Christians need to communicate or be able to communicate who he is. Who is he to you? Who is he to you? Not to Pastor Campbell, but to you. God is something different to you than to me. He's something different to me than to you. You can't, he can't be the same in your, my life as he is in your life because he did something different for you. You put your feet in my shoes, you couldn't get, your feet won't get in the crevices that mine is in. So never say, I wish I could walk in your shoes. Because you can't, you might, you might go bear to the left and mine might bear to the right. I might have a low, no, he, uh, what's that? A uh, no, no arch. arch and you might have an arch. Thank you. Everybody has a different walk, a different talk. You know, especially when I talk to the kids, when I talk to them and I ask them a question and they said the same thing that that person, I say that in the dog class too, not just the kid. They said the same answer. I said, what did they say? <laughs> and as soon as they repeat it, they said something different. They didn't say exactly what she said. They said something different. That means God has something different for you to be a part of this ministry, to be a part of the kingdom house. Everybody don't want the Bible beaten down on them. Mom was, uh, she, she stole my thunder this morning. And, I, and you know how I am. I just can be just as plain as day with you. She asked me a question about how you know the Bible is real. And I told her because God will let you know in here. But she didn't tell me till weeks later. And I, I thank her for this. Because this is a testament to the God that I serve. She said if I would have answered her any other kind of way. She wouldn't have came back here. 
she wouldn't have came back to this church. But I answered how God told me to answer her. And I'm telling you that was because what a lot of times is when people come to you and looking for help and, and, you, and they ask you for some help, the first thing you say, I'll pray for you. But to me, a lot of times, that's an excuse to say, I don't want to be bothered with you. What can I do to help you? Yeah, we can pray, but it's something else that I can do to help you. Especially if you don't have no food. We can go feed you. And you're still using wisdom and discernment. And then I, that don't mean just give them money. Take them to get something to eat. Because you're wise. Some, uh, somebody come in here with some raggedy clothes. You can't just tell them, you can't come in here. No. You want it, what you want to do is go get them some clothes and break the barriers down first. Don't tell them that we don't dress like that here. You go buy them some clothes. If, you, if their clothes offend you, Buy them some. That's what I expect. And that's what, it, what God is expecting from you. Quit trying to tear people down because you forgot where you came from. And want to always throw scripture at people. I'm telling you, you're doing a discredit to Jesus. Just scripture, scripture, scripture. You discredited him. Because you don't know him. You don't understand who he is. I could have gave her Bible verse. And I would have been a discredit. Because she didn't, wouldn't have understood what I was talking about. I was in a sauna one day with somebody. And, and another gentleman was asking about the Bible. And the, the gentleman that came in. Every word that he said was Revelation this. John this. Mark this. Luke this. And, and go here and go there. So the guy got up and left. And I stayed there. So as soon as the door shut, I'm going to ask you a question. What teacher will let any student come in their classroom and continue to talk wrong? So the teacher in me came out. So I said, I understood everything that you were saying. But that guy had no knowledge of the Bible. So you just ran him off because you were the Bible thumper. I said, you must have just graduated. And he did. He said, I just graduated Friday, last Friday, and that was Monday or Tuesday. So he was zealous to do something, but he didn't have the understanding. I said, let me help you out. I said, when I talk to people, first thing I talk about is sports. Because I want them to get to know me. I don't tell them who I am. I don't tell them. If I got to tell them that I'm pastor such and such, such and such, who am I trying to convince? Me or you? You should already know the God that dwells in you. You don't have to tell people who you are. Let your light so shine. And this is where the scripture said, a light that's on the hill can't be hidden. So if you got the light of God in you, you won't be hid. You won't be shut off. They will know who you are by the fruit that you bear. So I told him, I said, I know, I, I understand everything you said, but you lost that guy. I said, the problem is, you don't know how to talk to people and represent the kingdom of God. Because all you know is scripture. But when somebody's broken or somebody has a question, how are you going to answer that question? For they can understand it. Just like your question to me. Well, it wasn't to me, to the, to the church. She asked a question at a conference. And she said, what, and she was talking about the, Satan and Michael and Moses. Why was Satan and Michael fighting over Moses? I could have went to scripture, scripture, scripture. But the Holy Spirit quickened my mouth and said a certain way. And her reply was said, you went to many churches and asked that question to many people. But when it was answered by the Spirit, her, it agreed with her spirit. And the answers that she was looking for was answered. 
Because you have a relationship with God. And he's given you access to the throne room. So when you have access to the throne room, you can pull out. See, and this is why when I say that you've got to read your word, what it is, you, you're putting time with God. It's like putting in your money in your bank account. So when you put your money into your bank account and you need it to get access to it, you can pull it out. If you don't put nothing into your account, you can't pull nothing out. So your access is denied. So just think about when you're talking to somebody and you represent the kingdom of God and you try to get access to God to help somebody else. What are you saying? What is your words? Sometimes your words just got to be the truth. Think y'all might get that one in the parking lot. See, and that's what I'm about to tell you. Sometimes people give you the scriptures because they don't know the truth. Somebody don't want to ask you a question and they throw scripture up and Bible verses up because they don't know the truth. But your question sounds like a scripture that I remember. So let me say that because I don't know how to help you. I told you the smartest person in the room is the one that said, I don't know that answer. But I'll look it up and get back with you. The truth. And what you do in the Lord. The truth. So now Jesus talks about what will happen upon his return. These ten virgins are waiting for the groom. And they have their lamps. All ten have their lamps. We understand that there are ten of them, right? Ten. Five that's wise and five that's foolish. But it's ten. Stay with me. And they are separated by two groups. Two groups. The first group he considers wise. And the other group is considered foolish. I've already told you that the ten virgins represent the church. What group are you in? What group do you fall in? Can I unpack what makes one wise and foolish for you? You might want to get your pens ready for some of this. They both have lamps, but five of them carry oil for their lamps. They all look alike. They all look alike. They all were waiting for the groom. For, so my first question is, what are you waiting for? Yes. Can I help you answer that? Scripture says, do all that you can do, then stand. What does that mean? God says, I ordained you to do certain things while you wait on me. But I'm not coming until you do those certain things. So do all that you can do. And then you wait on God. So you, you hear in the world too often, hey, what you doing? Oh, I'm waiting on the Lord. Well, you're going to wait till, till, the, till the sun don't shine no more because he said do all that you can do. Then you wait. So you got to prepare yourself as you wait. But you're doing something. You're doing something. You're taking care of some business somewhere. Especially for those that's single and the desire to be married. You don't go out looking for them, but you prepare yourself. You do all that you can to prepare yourself, adorn yourself in the right manner, to look the right way. But then after you do all that, then you wait. Then you wait. <laughs> the ten virgins were sitting there waiting for the groom the call of midnight came the call came out that there was the arrival of the groom and a panic set in everybody a panic set in 
Because now the foolish ones understood that their lamps were not prepared. He wasn't ready. Say, not ready. Somebody say that. Not ready. Not, not going to happen here. That's why we teach. That's why we preach. That's why we instruct. That's why we love on you because we want to prepare you. So when it's time, you can't say, not ready. You're going to be instructed in the ways that you're supposed to do. You're going to, get in, you're going to be challenged in the way that you're supposed to be challenged. Some of you are not going to like me for a while, but then you're going to appreciate because the spirit that dwells in you is going to agree. Remember, I don't, I don't do no church hurt. I do church love. Kingdom love. So when I come to you in pastoral correction, I'm here to help you. And I'm here to challenge you. So you cannot say, not ready. So those ten, those five asked the wise version, can I borrow some, can I borrow some of your oil? Their response was, no, you cannot. But pastor, they're all saints. They're all Christians. How are they going to tell me that I cannot? You're supposed to help me. And they said, because it will not be enough for you and I if I give you what I have. So they said, so you need to go out to buy your own. So don't you think that was selfish of them? Hey, man, you a bright crowd today, boy. Why wouldn't you share your oil? What did I tell you the oil was? So let me tell you, I can't share my salvation with you. I can show you my salvation. But I can't share my salvation with you. You have to have your own salvation. You got to go through this on your own. So I can't share my oil with you. I can't share my salvation with you. I can show you what it took for me to get there. And you can see the outcome. So no, it's not selfish. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not being disrespectful for you. I'm just being wise to my wishes from God. I can't show you. And then there was a time and place that this oil that they were carrying could not just have happened overnight. So what is it saying? The scripture said that I've given you ample time to prepare yourself. Because scripture tells us no man knows the day nor the hour that the time of the son. The son don't even know when the father is coming back. The Holy Spirit don't know. But it's given us time to prepare ourselves. Everybody that's under 16, under 17, you don't have the same amount of time that we have. Right. You have to prepare yourself now. Because yes. your time is not like we had. You know, when I think about these five virgins and they told them to go out, they never, it never mentioned in the scripture that they got oil, did it? it I can never, it, unless I, I, I'm not studying right, I never seen where it said that they got the oil. But it did mention that when time came, they said, Lord, Lord, open the door. Scripture did say that. And they said, the Lord said their access denied. Because God said, I've prepared, given you time to prepare yourself. Don't go about being formality in church. Be about his business. Scripture says, that being a, Jesus said, I'm being about my father's business. And I'm going to tell you how hard that being about your father business hit me one time. My dad passed. 
And when he passed, they asked me to do the funeral. And I said, Dad, I said, God, I can't do the funeral. That's my dad. He said, yes, that's your dad, but I'm your father. Do we understand what he was saying? When you're called, when you accept your calling, that's your mom, but he's your dad. He's your father. God said, I have a bigger plan for you. So I had to get out of my way and let him take over. Let him be the head. Because I couldn't see an access denied coming my way. I didn't, want to re I didn't want to receive that. To activate the Holy Spirit, you need to spend some time with God. Spend time with Him. Give up Facebook at times. Because guess what? Those likes is not going to add up to when God comes calling. Now, I'm on Facebook a lot. But I'm posting a lot of stuff about God. And it's, I want to make sure that his word get there. But I do spend time with God. Got to be balanced in this thing. While I was watching the football game last night, my mom said, you can't watch the game because you're you you, you reading all the stuff everybody's sending you. I said, only get it on the commercials. Only on the commercials. I ain't getting denied. I couldn't miss the game. Conference champs, says to me. <laughs> to activate the Holy Spirit, you need to spend time with God. What are you doing to gain access, people? Saints, what are you doing to... Received the access. They were wise and foolish. It's simply this. The wise were the true believers of God. The true believer says, no matter what God be before me, you come back, I am ready and willing. That's what true believer says. I'm ready and willing. I prepared myself. I did this ahead of time. The other side, the foolish are the ones who are here just for the party. They sit next to you in church services sometimes. They just here for the party. They ain't that no responsibility for. There's like those snakes we talked about before. I might have to pull that message out again. All the different kind of snakes. And none of them was true to what they said they're doing in ministry. None. They want to gain access by association. The foolish people. Write that one down. They want to gain access by association. That was like my son. When he said that, that he didn't have to become part of this family. Because mom and dad was the pastor. Don't work that way. It's not by association. You got to show accountability for yourself. You got to do this for yourself. Mom and dad can't do this for you. I don't want to hear access denied. I want to take a step back before I close out. You know any men and women in the Bible that access was denied? One, for instance, brings mind to me is Moses. But Pastor Moses did all this and all that. But Moses was not allowed to go into the promised land because his access was denied because of what he'd done. So what am I saying to you is don't do all this lovely stuff. And when it's time to get to the promised land, access is denied. I got to take another time out. I'm glad to see you. Yes, ma'am. How are you doing? You doing good? You know what somebody told me and that it still blessed me and now when, when I see you, it just makes me bubble all over. 
You said that you was going to leave your toothbrush over somebody's house so, and you can go spend the night so you can come back to church with them? So you, you working on your access to be granted, huh? That blessed my heart. Because you like what I, I was saying during that Sunday? That you wanted to come back? So that you understood what I was saying? You understand what I'm saying today? A little? What'd she say? A little? That's all you need right now. That little is going to grow to be a big flower. So that means you're going to grow to be a beautiful woman in God. And your access won't be denied. Yeah, come on. Give God some praise there. You can't wait to the last minute to get your access gained. You got to prepare yourself. In Matthew 24 and 36, it says, But about the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father knows. We got to stop playing with our salvation as if it's a credit card. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Or thinking that, that when we run out of money, is there. You're going to go there one time and they're going to say, access denied. Stop playing with your salvation that way. It's not a credit card. This is what happens to some. Watch what happens. It says in Matthew 7, 21 to 33, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter, in, enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, in heaven. May, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And this is what Jesus is saying to some of us. This is what he's saying to us. Don't let this be you. Don't let you, these words come up across your ears. So many, so many ministers, friends. I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't matter how many times you preach or how many times you speak. If you don't have it with the Holy Spirit, it don't mean nothing. Deacons. If you're not a deacon with the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter. Saints, if you're not a saint with the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter. It would be a shame to go through. And when it really mattered, it says access denied. Remember the ten virgins looked alike until it was time to meet the groom. They all looked alike until it was time to meet the groom. And then when it came down to it, the preparation was never taken care of. The five that was, had planned ahead of time were allowed access. And then the five that never planned right were denied access. Don't let your spirit be denied access to the throne room. Matthew 13 and 30 said, Let both of you grow together unto the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reaper, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn. But gather the wheat into my barn. We've been conditioned as men and women to look at the conditions on the outside of the matter. But this scripture right here tells us what happens is all conditions grow up together. Until they fully blossomed, you don't know which one is right. But when they fully blossom, God said, I'm going to take the ones that's not right and burn them up. And then I'm going to bless the others. Which one are you? What are you doing? What do you want? What is God saying to you? Give God some praise in this place.